Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of I Don't Know Techno. Today we are going to be talking about one of my favorite Nintendo Switch accessories, the x GameCube controller. Now, this thing's pretty cool because it is not just for the Switch, but it can go on multiple consoles like the iPhone, the Android, or literally any other console if you wanted to. There are a few problems that I will discuss in this video, but for the most part, we're going to be discussing how to connect it to your devices, discussing how to do like a... Uh, get it set up for like your computer or um set up for your switch so and then my honest review at the end so let's go ahead and get started okay so the first device we're going to want to connect this to today is the nintendo switch so let's go ahead and switch to the other screen real quick okay so first thing we're going to want to do is turn the system on double tap or triple tap and we're going to do this from the point of view as if you have no joy cons and this is the only controller you got so you open it up go in here hit change grip or order and what you do is hold the home button down and the x button down until it flashes really fast and then it connects so that is how you do that you hold the home button and x button down and the whole bottom line will flash back and forth really quickly. There's a mode where it just flashes normally compared to the really quickly. So you'll want to make sure that you have it flashing, having the mode that flashes really fast because then it should stop after just a few seconds and then connect immediately to it. So that is how you connect it to the Nintendo Switch device, as you can see. When we go back, close this, and just open up some Mario Odyssey. And as you can see, everything works perfectly. The A button works, the B button works, X and Y both work, and plus works as it's intended to, minus works as it's intended to. All the triggers work, which makes me happy. Um, and, you know, this feels like an actual GameCube controller. I think that's one of the highest perks of it. It feels like I'm actually holding a GameCube controller. It has a nice weight to it, too. It feels like there's actually weight to it doesn't feel like I'm just holding some cheap piece of plastic so I think that's also a perk okay so the next device we're going to be connecting it to today is the Apple iPhone so this works for any iPhone that has Bluetooth and gamepad support so let's go ahead and move over there real quick so first things first you're going to want to tap on Bluetooth then we'll set this down real quick and Holding the home button and the Y button, it should get it to one spot on the bottom glowing, flashing back on and off. So, and for some reason, it shows up as Xbox wireless controller. So, as you heard, it buzzes when it's connected. So, and now it's connected to the device. So let's go test it out. And as you can see, everything works so you can use this has full uh, compatibility on here and yeah the controller works on your phone also this controller connects to your PC the same way so if you want to connect to your computer you'll hold the home button down and the Y button and it should just show up in your Bluetooth settings as Xbox wireless controller as well and you just connect it or it also has USB-C so you can also connect it to your computer through USB-C now it's time to talk about some of the issues I have with it so the major thing that I really have an issue with is the A button and the B button are swapped and the X button and Y button are swapped so the B button actually is the A button and the A button is actually the B button now why is this a problem? So, if you were wanting to use a GameCube controller on, like, modern games, like on Steam or anything like that, it's going to be swapped. Everything's going to be swapped, and it's going to mess it up a little bit because it'll take your head getting used to why it... Now, you can go into the settings and change it on, like, which buttons, the button mapping on a few games. And it isn't really a problem for emulators, especially, like, Dolphin or anything like that, since you have to program it anyway. But I'd rather it just work the way it should with the button mapping being right in general but besides that that's really my only big issue with it it has 
a ton of battery life. I've been using this for uh, three weeks now, and I've been using it every night with my Switch, and I have not run out of battery or, or anything, and I haven't put it on the charger or anything either, so it, it just has a good battery life, and it feels nice, it's heavy to hold, it has HD rumble, which is really nice, and it also has gyro, so like, for Switch games, like Wii ports, like uh, Super Mario Galaxy or anything like that, or like uh, Super Mario 3D World, you can use it as the pointer because it has gyro in it, which is really nice. It's a really nice touch. I was not expecting it to have gyro in it when I first used it, so that is just a nice feature. And then, as I said earlier, it's also USB Type-C, so it charges really fast, has a really good battery life. All around, I'd say it's really one of the perfect wireless GameCube controllers. The only thing I could think of to compete with it at the moment is like a uh, the Power A GameCube controller, which is also really nice. But I, I would prefer this over that. It also has a turbo button, which is cool. I don't really understand it very much. I don't really like the turbo button. But I would say the only competitor to this device is the Power A GameCube controller. So, but yeah. It's nice, feels good, has a C stick, has the regular stick, feels like an exact replica of the game you control. It even has clicky back triggers or anything like that. It is very nice. I am very happy with it. It was a great purchase. Now, when it comes to price, they usually go for about $49.99, but I bought mine used on Amazon with the Amazon refurbished thing for uh, $41. But Usually you'll find them $45 to $50, uh, so if that's a little bit out of your price range, I can understand that. But I think it's I think it's worth it. It's it's almost as good as a Pro Controller for me, just with all the features it has. And it doesn't have Amiibo reading support, which I, I don't know who uses Amiibo anymore. It's 2023, I don't know who uses Amiibo anymore these days. I mean, it's nice for some games, but most games don't even have support for it anymore anyway. I'd say it's worth it. I'd say it's worth the buy. I'd say it's worth the purchase. I'd say it's worth using because it, if you're looking for that solid GameCube controller that's not $69.99 like the Power A controller, then I would suggest getting this one. And you could find it used for about $40 to $45 or $40 to $50. So I would say I would give this an A plus rating. So, well. Thank you all for watching today's video, and I hope you all enjoyed. I enjoyed making this video. This is one I've wanted to make for a little while now, just on reviewing this controller specifically because I really did like this controller. It had a lot of good perks, and it has a few little bad perks, but I think the I think the pros overweigh the cons in this situation, just with how good the controller feels in your hand. It feels quality. It feels like it was a quality-made product. So, but anyway, thank you for watching and check out some of my other videos or some of my me and my co-host's other videos, which I'll link at the end of the video. Well, see ya. Bye.